Uh, so I'm going to start. So uh, my name is Pankaj. Uh, I'm from Samsung, uh, working as a part of the global open source team uh, in Denmark. Uh, but today I'll be talking about supporting zone block devices with uh, non port of two zone sizes. Uh, I, I really wish to, uh, I was hoping to be there physically over there, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, I couldn't, I couldn't make it physically, but uh, I really thank the LPC community, uh, committee to allow me to talk virtually. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, okay. So the agenda for today, uh, it's going to be like, first I'm going to give a, a, a bit of like uh, context on the past and present uh, of the zone block device support in Linux. And then, and then I'm going to talk about the work I've been doing on non pod of two zone test support in Linux. And, uh, and then finally I'm going to talk about some conclusion and future work. So the part one. Uh, so before we dive into the topic, I, I would like to get some definitions uh, uh, straight. So what is zone? It's a contiguous uh, range of logical blockages that are managed as a single unit. Zone block device is a collection of them, of multiple zones. Zone size is size of a zone. And, and another concept is called chunk sectors that is, a, that is, that is coming from Linux. But uh, Linux sort of divides a device into multiple chunks. And, and the merging is uh, like, m m like an IO merging is not allowed across two chunks. Uh, and when this uh, definition was introduced in Linux, uh, it was declared to be a power of two value. Um, and later on, when zone device support was added to Linux, we sort of used the concept of chunk sectors to map a zone. Um, yeah, so next slide. Uh, so the first devices that were uh, zone block devices were SMR drives. So the standards that I use is ZAC, uh, ZBC. Standards are used typically to uh, uh, to interface with SMR drives. So, uh, how are zones formed in SMR drives? Like you have overlapping tracks that are grouped into bands that are called zones in, in SMR. Uh, and zone size is always a power of two. At least the the devices that are available in the market, it's always a power of two. Uh, and and generally in in these SMR drives, you have the last zone. Uh, it's called a run zone, which might have a smaller zone size, typically. And then came uh, the zone block device support for NAND flashes. Uh, the, the standards that are used is like NVMe ZNS. And there are also other standards that are up and coming to, uh, for, for uh, zone-based zone, uh, zone NAND flashes. Uh, and how, how a zone formed in, 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 a, in a NAND flash is based on erase blocks. And the one important thing to note in, in NAND flash is because of multiple constraints, is the usable LBS in a zone is not a power of two. Not necessarily a, a power of two. It's it's not uh, it's not black and white here. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, it's, uh, but but there are various constraints that are coming from manufacturing. Of course, you can make it power of two, but but from what I heard from from the people, like yeah, the key point is you can, yes. Yeah, we, we can, but I don't think it's yeah. The point here is it's not typically available. Uh, uh, for non flashes, yeah. So uh, okay, so so then we add a new concept. And then we have a definition V two like to the NVMe in spec. Uh, uh, like added a new concept called zone capacity. Uh, and so what is a zone capacity? It's like usable logical blocks in a zone. And and then you had zone size, which is uh, it's the size of a zone. But that is the only constraint over there is it needs to be greater than or equal to zone size. And for, for the device to work in Linux, uh, as I already mentioned about the chunk sectors, uh, it, it needs a power of two value to work in Linux. So what does it lead to is, uh, do I hear something? Oh, okay, so I'm gonna just go. So what does it lead to is LBA gaps. Uh, so when you have, um, up, so for a device to work in Linux, you need to have a power of two zone size. And, uh, and 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 as I already mentioned, the 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 NAND the NAND capacity like erase blocks is typically non power of two, which leads to LBA gaps in a zone. Uh, I think Duberko, who talked before, also mentioned about this 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 constraint of like where you have the capacity yeah, less than the size. Uh, so so you, w w what it leads to is like you when you have a zone, you always have like the zone capacity is typically less than the zone size, and you have these kind of LBA gaps in between them in all the zones. And, and what it leads to is when you try to read from, from the LBA gaps, it acts, it acts like a delegated blocks that's given the ZNS spec where 
you return zeros or a pattern based on um, based on how it's configured, but the writes or any other operation is not allowed in, in that in that catch. Uh, and SMR drives should not have this problem, as I already mentioned, because they have the usable blocks uh, as, as power of two. Uh, yeah. So uh, typically when you have a, a Zenus device, like, you know, uh, with, with, uh, with power of two zone size and, and zone capacity that's less than zone size, then you have these LBA caps in them. Uh, yeah. So ne next, I'm going to talk about. Uh, All right, I have a quick question. Yeah. So you said SMR drives don't have the problem. Not problem. problem. <laughs> Characteristic. <laughs> definition. How would that react with uh, SMR drives that are mixed between conventional and sequential zones? Because those might not necessarily be the same size. So you're right, the standard doesn't mandate that they're all the same size, but Linux does. And the uh, vendors, uh, for to facilitate application development, they make all the zones the same size. Yeah, I hope that answered the question. Thanks, Damien. OK, so now I'm going to talk about the work uh, I've been doing uh, for, the, for, the, for the past few months. So it's the adding non power of two zones as support in Linux. So I always sort of like touched upon the topic of like uh, the LBA gaps, and that's one of the main reasons that we want to uh, tackle this problem. So uh, so because of the constraints that are, that are there from for the flash based zone devices, you have this LBA gaps between the zone capacity and zone site. And what does it lead to is uh, you have like the gap sort of inside the LBA range about the usable block size. Uh, what I mean over here is, let's say you have uh, 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 a ZNS drive with the size of two terabytes. Because of gaps, uh, the actual capacity can be 1.2 terabytes, but still you can, the LBA is still accessible after the, the you know, the, the, the actual usable LBA. It, it, so this, so I think this, uh, I, I think this sort of like confuses people and, and typically that's not how a device works. Uh, and we always get questions from, from customers like, why, why is there this, this kind of gap? And uh, another point uh, that even uh, the previous talk, uh, the presenter also mentioned is like the application needs to align the zone capacity, not the zone size, to reap the benefits of DNS to avoid any garbage collection. So over there, zone size is sort of like a, like, like, you don't really have any use for it, but like the application still needs to use its own capacity as as a, as a way to align its its uh, its, its application needs. And another pain point that that we have heard is like the gap sort of introduces logic in the read path. What I mean over here is when you want to read a, a complete zone, you always have to make sure you don't close the zone capacity, or else you'll you'll have like results that are that are not really what you wrote, but but something that the device gives back. So. Uh, yeah, question please, on this one. Yeah. So when you read a zone, you can the the what you read the valid data is up to the right pointer. So when you read a zone, you shouldn't read past the right pointer. What difference does it make that the 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 right pointer reached the zone capacity or not? It's the same problem. It's it's part of the same thing you have to do uh, to to manage uh, a zone drive. You shouldn't read past the right pointer. And by extension, you shouldn't read past the zone capacity. To me, there's no differences there. And so that, that's part of a, uh, one of the points we had uh, discussed on the list. I yeah. personally yeah. don't really uh, see a problem there because that's something you have to do anyway. I, I get your point, but uh, let's say, uh, like, like the, uh, Adam, you want to talk? Uh, or I... Oh, yeah, I can say something about that, right? So I, I don't think that's the, the issue that they're, they're, they're seeing there. One one is okay. You you say there's a zone capacity that's smaller than the zone size, but then when you report the capacity of the device, it's the size of the zone zone size, right? Because you look at the LBA space as the capacity, so that's one problem. Uh, I think the the second thing. Well, okay, we can debate whether it's a problem. I won't go that far because you're you're worried about it. So it's a feature, and so uh, the second thing is that. When 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 a zone is full, right? So I completely agree that it's about the, the you need to know the right pointers, right? Like like otherwise it's not valid, right? But the thing is, say the zone is full, and you want to read to the next zone. When you have the gaps in the LBA space, you have to jump past the unusable space, right? And but it it's somewhere, right? Because we did like shedding about, hey, we're going to be able to do um, 
uh, a bit or uh, a shift to get to the next zone, things like that. But then there is an extra operation on some point. This, that's the only thing that we're talking about here, right? Someone has to figure uh, I, that out I, at some I point. Under, I understand it, but the the my, the point I'm trying to make is back to to the presentation from uh, from Hans. You work with the zone as a unit, and so reading uh, a full zone. You, of course, can read only up to the capacity. And if you want to go on reading the next zone, that's a different zone. You shouldn't assume that the LBAs are, are aligned, even though they, they are in practice, because that's the next zone, and just switch to, to, to that next object, which is your zone, and then read that. But, but I think the all point the, is... To... All the, the management is per zone. and. You shouldn't treat a zone drive as a contiguous set of LBAs like uh, like a regular drive. That that's always my my point, for, and why I I don't see that as a problem. Let's say. Yeah, I think so. But I think some of the motivation for that thinking, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you are using something like um, zone zone FS, right? Like in there, it's completely true because you get handles, right? Like you get handles to a zone. So my point is, how you need a handle, like when you're using a raw block device. You need a handle to wherever the start of the zone is, and when there's gaps, you need to figure that out. Uh, but again, you need those handles anyway because you need to manage zones. So you, a, a well-designed application will have that. Yes, but I, I think so. I think I think we're talking about something where the code goes into oversimplifying zone management, uh, and that ends up to me uh, as the wrong way to do it. Yeah, I, I think it just it really it's. It's yeah, like what, one, one uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Like the one point also, what I want to make is like if, if let's say the zone is full, right? So and and uh, and let's say we manage one zone as a unit. Even then, you need to have logic in there. Like, hey, am I actually crossing uh, the zone capacity? Then we, I, I have like uh, like you know uh, invalid data. Uh, that's sort of the point I was trying to make. I, I do agree with Damien where like you manage one zone as a unit and then like. Having you typically don't know because back to my point, you can't read past the right pointer anyway, so your right pointer will be the zone equal to the zone capacity. But, but if you have zone is full, Damien, like when the zone is full, uh, but I, I think we can we can discuss about this. I, I want to complete, uh, maybe I can go ahead and we can talk about this point later uh, if, uh, if you don't mind, or uh, if someone has if someone has a question, yeah, we can go out, go out with Okay, I would like to add. If, for example, file system supports segments, I don't need, I don't see any troubles with uh, holes, uh, non-aligned zones. But if file system hasn't segment concept, it's big trouble. From my point of view. So sorry, I, I really don't want to get involved with this discussion. But um, from <laughs> from F to every point, actually, I do see one problem actually in terms of that gap zone because for example we do have an extent cache which means that we do we cache one extent starting lba to length you do get fragmentation of extents with Ex exactly so we do actually see 10 to 20 percent sequential read bandwidth regression because if there is a gap zone there but Unless the you know the, it depends on zone size actually. If zone size is pretty much big, then no problem at all. But some vendors are like you know mobile size. We have much smaller zone size in that case. We can get some. But but back to my argument that you have to manage zones anyway. Merging extents that cross over zones would probably be a bad idea in the first place. Uh, yeah, but implementation problem because yeah. we cannot we cannot you know keep the multiple extent caches. We do only keep all, only the largest extent entry only. Uh, I'm sorry, your name is Damon? Damien. Damien? Damien? Yeah, I, I think I completely agree with you. Fundamentally, the read has to be split, right? So it, uh, w whether you're splitting it at this level of the software stack or, or lower in the stack, it has to be done. So I I just, I don't see what problem you're avoiding. But that's, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but OK, uh, I, I'll move on. Then maybe with that, uh, the idea gets better. Uh, but uh, I, I'm going to move on at this point. And we can have this discussion again later uh, at point time. So uh, also why now it's also like, uh, okay, uh, th that was a good reason why we had this kind of like uh, power of two constraint on the zone size. But uh, at this point in time, like Linux actually removed the power of two chunk sector constraints since uh, version 5.10. Uh, so we don't have the constraint of power of two anymore. And, uh, and, and, and DNS are being deployed in real environments where we get this question 
again and again where like why do we have these kind of gaps in in, in a zone and and why can't we uh, like you know why do we have to have uh, uh, why can't we write in, in the gaps and these kind of questions always pops up from from the customers and and also there are newer standards that are being targeting that, that are being targeted towards nand devices right so uh, there are new standards that are coming uh, for nand devices uh, to 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 add the zone support and i think it's a responsibility of the community to to make sure we don't have these artificial constraints pushed upon the new standards but but i, I think that also it's very important for us to maintain backwards compatibility so uh, i'll touch upon the backwards compatibility a bit later um so this is one of the reason why we want to uh, tackle this problem there was a good reason why the power of 2 constraint was laid on the zone sizes but that is there is no use case at this point to have to have it anymore apart from Uh, the applications and and the, uh, the the file systems that are already been written to to have power of two uh, assumption. So uh, a bit of history before. Oh, do I hear something? Okay. Uh, so before I, I get into what what the current work has been, uh, it, it's it's going on. I'm, I want to give a bit of history, like the the different attempts we did. I'm not going to go too much into detail what we did. I think there is not enough time. but uh but basically it sort of like gave us a good opportunity to talk with the community and really understand uh, how can we uh, have this feature to uh, to to uh, like without like you know uh, without breaking the existing application so uh, I, i can go in detail about this where, where like after the chat or something in the chat so uh, so after having multiple attempts and talking with the community and talking with within our team so this is what of this is the goal that we came up with to enable non power of 2 zone size in the next for devices with zone size equal to zone capacity the reason we have we have we want this constraint is to make sure we don't again introduce gaps uh and uh, that 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 actually point was made by damian and in the main which was a very valid point and uh, and also ensure compatibility i think this was very important uh for the new devices the non power of 2 zone size devices uh and to in existing file systems and user space application until we add native support in all of them so this is sort of the goal that we came up with after having uh, discussing after discussing with the community uh and we sort of split the goal into uh, like uh, two phases like this is the roadmap that we that we finally uh, ended up with uh, in the phase one we want to add native support for block and nvme Players and uh, and until we add the and, uh, the native file system support, we want to use, like the the application and the file systems can use the device mapper to to uh, to to access the non power of two device. So so everything I'm talking about is about non power of two device. Like whatever uh, deployment are existing in, in the in uh, all the existing are, are not going to be affected at all. So that's very important to know. Uh, and in the phase 2 we want to slowly start adding a uh, native support in in the file systems and application as we move forward so this sort of avoids uh, doing a big bang change and and breaking a lot of things instead we we move it more in phases and uh, and it sort of like make sure make sure that we don't affect the the application and file system we don't have to change everything at the same time so what is the current approach as i already mentioned uh, native block layer and nvme type of support for non power of two zone sizes without performance regression uh, this is very important for the existing deployment and and a device mapper target uh, dum pure zones uh, that, that was introduced as a part of this to convert a, a non power of two zone size devices to pure two zone size target so what we try to do in device mapper is to turn the non power of two device into a power of two target until we add native support uh because all the application and the file systems have always had the assumption of uh power of 2 uh zone size sectors and and we need to make sure that those things are supported while we add the support for non power of 2 zone size zone sizes uh so now into the results like the first part uh with respect to uh regression uh we we really didn't see any performance regression for the power of 2 uh, zone sizes so how we measured it is like with patches and without patches so we try to see uh, uh, like if because of the support if there are any issues with the existing deployments uh, we couldn't find any like uh, like i i tested with the null block and see if the block layer has any any uh, regression because of the support 
because there was one point there was always made uh, from the community like are we going to affect the existing deployments which we didn't and also uh, there was a point we wanted to test the progression where like uh, having non power of 2 and power of 2 does it really have any effects uh, in, in in the block layer stack again uh, from the results what we saw like uh, i could hardly find any any uh, difference in terms of in terms of performance for uh, power of two zone test device and non power of two zone test device, uh, one of the main reasons is in the hot path we don't really have uh, any place where we do division or anything. Um, so that 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 sort of made sure that we don't have any any regression for uh, either kind of devices. So and then under the topic of oh, do I hear something? Okay, that was I think there's a noise coming up coming from there. Uh, so uh, uh, next, I'm going to talk a bit about the the, the new target that's being added, the DMPO2 zone. Uh, Damien, we should have a discussion about the, the naming. I know uh, you suggested to have DMPO2 zone, but uh, I had some more discussion with Mike, so we can can talk about that later. Uh, so the, how, how does it does it work? So you have a device, let's say, uh, like the, the same example that I gave before, we have a device that is, has zone capacity of three megabytes and zone size also three megabytes. Uh, we do exactly how a device does. We sort of like add a, make a target that has the same zone capacity, but uh, give the LBA gaps uh, similar to how a device works. Like uh, we, we create like the LBA gaps in between uh, the zone size and the zone capacity. So whenever we, ha we have a bio, we sort of uh, remap the bio and then send it to the device. I think I'm running low on time, so I'm gonna skip a bit quickly. Uh, and and there are some edge cases uh, for, for 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 the target where like what if the uh, what if the bio spans across uh, uh, like you know goes into the emulated zone area. In which case, we split the bio. Send only the the bio that's only in the valid part to the to the device, and the, that's in the emulated area. We're gonna fill it with zeros and send it back to the to the to the, the to the application which requested it. So it's exactly how uh, uh, a PO2 zone size device would work, and any other operations are, are not allowed. Uh, okay, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, like the the I, I did some measurements on this. Uh, of course, adding the uh, device mapper has some performance cost. But uh, but the the point here is like if if the performance is the main concern, I think people generally tend to go with uh, accessing the raw block device. Uh, but if you're gonna have like some sort of application like uh, or file systems, then uh, I I think the, the the performance difference should not matter that much because all already the file systems and the application might have some overhead. In which case, it, it, the uh, having this target shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, okay, so I have two minutes more. Uh, uh, to conclude, like now we can actually safely support uh, non power of two zone sizes, uh, zone size device in, in Linux. Uh, we noticed that there are no regression in the hot path for pure two zone size devices, and the application can use uh, the target until we add native support in each and every one of them. Uh, status in future work at, at the point, like we are in V13. Uh, it also includes all the discussion that we, like previous attempts that we, that we did with the community. Uh, and the, the whole thing was tested with block tests, uh, the zone of test shoot and, and FIO to, to check whether everything is working correctly. Uh, the future work, we are planning to, uh, uh, as I said, as a part of phase two, we want to add native support in file systems and use this application uh, slowly and steadily. And also we had some questions from the community about uh, adding non power of two zone test support in SCSI for zone GFS. So acknowledgement, uh, like, uh, so I want to give some acknowledgements before I conclude. Like uh, the reviewers, like I think Damien had a, like a lot of he he gave a lot of good points uh, while while we are developing the whole path series and and Hannes, uh, Bart I don't know if he's there, uh, Johannes and and Mike, uh, they they gave some really nice points about like you know and, and sort of shape the the direction of the uh, patch. And that's it. So I have one minute to spare and I. I'm done. So if you have any questions, so please ask me. Um, so you guys mentioned LBA gaps 
player zone size and zone capacity match. Um, is are there any bugs or pitfalls if, for instance, the capacity changes on the fly? Is there anything you're worried about? C come again. Uh, what's your question? Uh, are there any bugs or concerns about like if the capacity shrinks on the fly? Uh, no, it's not. It's not allowed. Uh, at least in Linux, you, you, you don't. Um, the standards uh, standard actually allows it, but Linux doesn't support it. Yeah, so exactly. Linux doesn't support those drives. Linux so doesn't support unequal I may I may reduce the capacity. The, the driver won't accept the drive. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. How, how does like the the previous DOC that we were looking at work then? Previous one. Let the last presentation with the cache. Or uh, sorry, that was just a proposal. But yeah, no. So uh, my point is. So ZNS specification allows drives to implement that uh, zone extrusion or whatever the name is, where uh, the zone capacity, uh, capa the capacity of a zone may be reduced due to too many bad blocks or something like that. But those drives are not supported by Linux currently. So they won't be accepted by the NVMe driver. Uh, didn't we see a presentation where we did, I, I think the very first presentation today talked about zone capacity shrinking. Maybe it was on a different platform. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure. Okay. All right. No. Uh, that uh, was yeah. 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 No problem. No problem. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, yeah, we can always have a chat later in, in the in the hack room or anything. So uh, thanks a lot. Oh,